Hello YouTubers, Flyer556 five, five, back again. The weather's starting to get warm. It's April 2015, and I'm going to start casting some ingots for making bullets again. I'm going to do a quick video today. i got to make this short because it, the sun is starting to go down, and it's going to be getting dusk, dusk soon, so I just want to make a video about how I get my lead. And let you guys know, if you want to get into bullet casting, uh, a lot of people are saying that lead's impossible to get and there's none left out there, and that's somewhat true. It is hard to come by, but if you're willing to work, you can get lead. This lead here that we're looking at in these six milk cartons on the left side is 3,000 pounds of lead. I got all this lead last year, in a matter of one year, not even, during last year's summer, the summer of 2014. That's 500, that's 500. That's 500, that's 500, the two in the back are 540 each. Each of these milk cartons has 541 pound ingots in it. Okay. Each of these milk cartons has 250 two pound ingots in it. And each of these milk cartons has 250 two pound ingots in it. I reclaimed all this by picking up shot bullets at the range. That's how I got all this lead. Now not only does that give me my lead, but it gives me lead that's good for bullet casting because in addition to needing lead, you need tin and you need antimony. And that's where it becomes expensive to cast bullets. So if you get range scrap, which is shot bullets at, at your range, it's already got a lot of tin and antimony in it already. Wheel weights which I have here in this milk carton. It's kind of hard to see because of the lighting in here. I got about 300 pounds of them in there. Three, 360 or 380, something like that. They're really getting hard to come by, I agree. They have even more tin and more antimony in them, and they're good for magnum loads, but they're really pretty impossible to get nowadays because the government more or less banned them nationwide, and uh, you're limited as to what you can get, but my next best choice is range scrap. And I just want to show you what I got in the time frame that I got it, and a, a brief description of how I get it. And uh, I got a little bit in stock that I'm going to smelt down this weekend, so that's why I want to make this video tonight before I smelt that down, because then I won't have anything to show you. So this pretty much sums up what I got over the summer of 2014. This 3,000 pounds, I collected this. Now this probably was five to 6,000 pounds before I processed it. This is after processing. It's 3,080 3, pounds of product in one summer. So, and, and this was 100% by myself. So it just goes to show if you're willing to put the work and put the time, you can get it. Now, in this milk carton here, this is all tin. And the way I get that is I scrap the jackets that I smelt off of the bullets that I get the sled from. And I sell it to the local recycler here. And I take the money and I reinvest it into these tin ingots that they have there. That's how I get my tin. There is tin and antimony in the range scrap, but you still do have to add some tin to get a good cast. Um, one or two percent, sometimes three percent. Not much, but you really got to have it if you want to get a, a store quality cast. And um, that's all I want. I, I cast 90% of all my handgun bullets. And I want that store quality casting on every single one. And the only way you're going to get it is to add a little bit of tin. But if you were buying lead, number one, you'd be buying it. And number two, you'd have to, if you were buying pure lead, like from a local recycler, you'd have to add all the tin and all the antimony to get the proper Brunel hardness you need to cast the bullets. I'm not going to get into all that. I want to keep this video short and basically just show you how I get lead. And, um... That it is still available out there if you're willing to do a little bit of work. Um, so that's that. Now we're going to take a walk over to my other garage and I'm going to show you the raw product. Uh, basically how I get it. So we're going to leave this garage. This is where I keep the stock. And over here in this garage, this is where I keep the stuff that, that's unprocessed. Um, this is the way it looks when I bring it home from the range. There's one full five gallon bucket and two half five gallon buckets. The reason for that is when I bring it home from the range, I bring the buckets home pretty much full like the white one. And when I get it home, 
I break them down and I put them in like half buckets because a full bucket's about 200 pounds and it's just too heavy to manage to move around to bring out to the turkey fryer to, to melt down to start smelting. So what I do is I break them down into half buckets and then it's about 100 pounds a bucket and it's a lot more manageable. This stuff is very dirty as you can see. It's muddy. It's dried mud that's on it. And a lot of people, videos I've seen show people washing it, cleaning it, and cutting the jackets. You don't have to do any of that. Basically, you dig this stuff out of the ground just the way you see it. That's the way I get it. And I basically dig it out of the ground. This is a sifter that I made. This is homemade. I put the dirt into there with the lead and everything and with a shovel. And you pick that up when it's full and shake all the dirt through as much as you can. Pull out any wads or any you know any kind of paper or garbage whatever you can get out the bulk of it and then dump what's left into those buckets and then that's how I get it and then when I come home I come home with buckets like this and basically I take a half a bucket like that and I take this machine here this is a turkey fryer it runs on a propane tank like that I take that I take that I take this big frying pan here which I found to be really useful in doing large large amounts of processing I used to use this small frying pan I upgraded to this as you can see I drilled the rivets out of the handles and put bolts so there's no chance of the handle snapping off because when I melt a half a pot or so in this it's about 30 35 pounds it's pretty heavy so when I pick it up to pour the ingots I don't want the handle to bust off so this is what I use to do all my smelting in and basically I take this raw product right here come on come on I take this raw product right here and um, I pour it into that bucket and I just start melting sorry for the noise there was a machine passing by I start melting I don't clean it at all I start the melting and then um, I skim off the jackets once it's completely melted, skim all the jackets off and then throw a little candle wax in and uh, stir it up, all that dirt and mud that you see there, that'll all float up to the top stir it up, scrape the bottom real good, skim out as much as you can I pull all that out and dump it into this metal barrel because it's extremely hot I simply use a spoon, that metal spoon right there that's what I do all the clean out with skim all that crud off the top and then one more time drop a little bit of wax in, scrape the bottom, stir it up do a final skimming and then uh, I pick up that pot right there, that big one on the right and I pour six ingots into that muffin pan and I just repeat the process over and over and over now as I said the full white bucket here that's about 200 pounds that's of rain scrap, of usable product once I'm done processing it I end up with about 120 pounds, about 60 ingots, which uh, leaves about 80 pounds of scrap and dirt and whatever. But out of that 200 pounds in that left bucket, the white one, I'll get 120 pounds of clean product with tin and antimony already in it. It's excellent casting material. And um, in, in about five or six hours, I, with that big pot that I showed, I can process a bucket of this on that turkey fryer. And that's how I get it. And I just wanted to put it out there and let you guys know. I see videos out there saying you got to take it and you got to clean it and you got to cut the jackets. You don't have to do any of that. As you can see, I got the proof next door to show how much lead I got in one summer strictly from picking up shot bullets that were filthy and processing them and um, it can be done and it can be gotten and you don't have to clean it you just take the time and you skim all the crud off dump it into a metal barrel it's not going to catch fire and dispose of it properly now the copper don't throw that away this is the byproduct of some stuff that I I cast I smelt it last weekend this is the copper that I got from a bucket and a half these are completely smelted there's no lead left in these jackets this is all copper however it's not clean copper it's dirty copper so this is what I sell to the recycler I take this to the recycling plant and um, they pay me brass for it that's why I keep it here with my shot brass that I'm scrapping 
and um, brass is approximately 165 to 175 a pound so I kind of sit on this until I get a couple hundred pounds or it, it, maybe even 300 if you get 300 pounds you're looking at around a $500 payoff when you leave so I use that money that I get from this to pay for the propane to pay for the fuel back and forth to the range and um, to pay for components now by doing this getting the brass at the range the lead from the range all I'm paying for is the primers and the powder which allows me to shoot more or less any handgun caliber for about 350 a box and if you take the payoff from this stuff and reinvest it into components it lowers the price even more so that's my system that's how I do it I go out to the range with this sifter with a shovel and spend a few hours and um, I come home with something that looks like this I go outside I spend a day Dedicate the whole day to it with that and that, smelt it down in this right here, skimming the crud off with that right there, into that metal barrel right there. I save all these jackets right here, because they give me money for these, a buck sixty-five, buck seventy-five a pound, and uh, that's how I do it. And that's that's it, that's all I wanted to get out there. I just wanted to, I figured I could save you guys some time and aggravation with what you go, got to go through. You don't have to do all that cleaning and all that cutting the jackets. The lead comes out. Once it gets hot and starts melting, it comes right out. And then once you get it all skimmed off and dumped into a barrel like that, and you got a nice clean chrome looking top on the lead, you just take that and start, uh, start pouring ingots into that. And as you can see, Last summer alone, I did 3,000 over, well over 3,000 pounds because I got 3,000 in stock and I cast it well over 500 in bullets easily. And um, I'm already starting another milk carton right here. I, I smelted this this weekend. That's a bucket and a half. I got 210 pounds right there of actual product out of a bucket and a half. There's four rows plus five ingots right there. So that's 210 pounds right there. Again, this, this is the same as the ones next door. It'll have 10 rows of 25, which is 250 ingots that are 2 pounds each, which will be a total of another 500 pounds. And I basically use this over here for casting because this is where I do my casting. I keep all my stuff here. It's always here, so when I want to do it, I'm not looking for this and looking for that. And, you know, everything I need, the safety glasses are there, the gloves are here. That metal top in the back, I use that for putting the, the sprue plate, the sprues on, and the slag and anything that I get, I put on that. And everything I need to do my bullet castings right here. I set up my Lee 420 on top of here, and um, I just put a chair here and I go to it, and that's how I do it. And uh, that's it. Just wanted to let you guys know how I get my lead and a short, brief description of how I smelt it to save you some time if you decide you want to get into this. It is out there and you can get it, but you got to be willing to do some work and put some time. And uh, if you do, you can shoot very affordably and there's plenty of lead out there to be gotten. You just got to be willing to do the work. Um, that's it. Any questions, leave it in the comments. Please remember, like, subscribe, try to help grow my channel. And uh, thanks for watching. Flyer 556, I'm out.